Hello, and welcome to today's webinar on ESDCP Funding Opportunities for Environmental Technologies. My name is Deanne Ryder, and I will be moderating today's session. We will get started in a few moments. While we wait for others to log on, I would like to cover a few logistical items. Today's broadcast will be listen only. We will have a question and answer period at the end of the presentation. You may submit your questions by using the chat box in the lower hand portion of the screen. You need not wait until the Q&A period to submit your questions. In fact, we encourage you to submit them in advance of that session. The phone lines will remain listen only throughout the presentation, so we will not be taking any questions verbally. We will not be able to answer any questions about specific proposal ideas or technologies during this webinar. If you run into any technical difficulties involving the presentation or call in line, please contact the ReadyTalk technical support as noted in the meeting confirmation email. Please note that both the audio and the presentation of today's session will be archived on our solicitation webpage in case you would like to refer to them in the future. Today's speakers are Dr. Ann Andrews, the Executive Director of CERTIF and ESTCP, and Dr. Andrea Leeson, the CERTIF and ESTCP Deputy Director and Program Manager for Environmental Restoration. Before I turn it over to Ann and Andrea, I remind phone participants that this is a listen-only session, and to submit questions, please use the chat box in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. Ann? Thank you, Deanne. And I'd also wel like to welcome everybody to today's webinar on the ESTCB Environmental Technology Solicitation for projects beginning in FY16. Uh, today we'll start with a little background on the program and the funding process. And then I'll turn this over to Andrea Leeson, who will talk to the description of the topic areas and give you some final thoughts to keep in mind as you prepare proposals. One note is that this solicitation and brief are focused on environmental technologies. Uh, the solicitation for installation energy technologies is due out in early February. Just a little background on the program. In our office, we actually run two programs. CERTIP, the Strategic Environmental Research and Development Program, is a science and technology program. It does basic and applied research and advanced technology development. And ESTCP, the Environmental Security Technology Certification Program, which is the subject of today's webinar, which does demonstration and validation of technologies. This next chart just shows visually um, the progression of the environmental technology development process. We begin with the um, requirements that are defined by the services. And in CERTA, conduct basic and applied research in advanced technology development. And in ESTCP, demonstration and validation and moving to implementation of technologies. The goal of ESTCP is to demonstrate innovative, cost-effective environmental technologies that capitalized in past investments, perhaps from CERTA, perhaps from other government investments or investments by private industry, and technologies that are ready to transition out of the lab. And the goal of the demonstration is to collect the cost and performance data that will be needed to promote technology implementation. And we look for direct technology insertion into DOD's processes and we also look to gain regulatory acceptance. Before we get into the process, uh, just a few words about the scope of CERTIP and ESTCP. Both programs respond broadly to two main environmental drivers. The first is the reduction in current and future liability. And this includes contamination from past practices, including groundwater, soils and sediments, unexploded ordnance, and contaminants of emerging regulatory concern. The other part of the liability question involves future liabilities, and that really is in the area of pollution prevention to control life cycle costs, in the elimination of pollutants and hazardous, hazardous materials in our manufacturing, maintenance, and operations. The second major environmental driver we respond to is the sustainability of our ranges, facilities, and operations. And this includes a broad variety of topics from threatened and endangered species, marine mammals, air emissions, dust, noise, munitions constituents on our ranges, and installation energy. The next chart shows the program management structure that we use in both CERTIF and ESTCP. We have program managers in the areas of weapons systems and platforms, resource conservation and climate change, munitions response, environmental restoration, and energy and water. 
and you'll find the solicitation is organized into these program areas. A little bit about what we're looking for in ESTCP demonstrations. The desired technologies are really those things that can benefit from a demonstration on a DOD installation that are focused on high priority problems for DOD, and where a demonstration will properly assess the cost and performance of, te of the technology and allow managers and regulators to make decisions about whether it will be useful on their site. We're really looking to use this information to accelerate commercialization and broader adoption of new technologies that will improve our environmental performance, decrease costs, decrease timelines to uh, deal with environmental problems. Mature technologies that are already in use or with well-established operational cost and performance are not appropriate for demonstration and validation, but at the same time, technologies will need to be sufficiently mature that a demonstration will result in meaningful data that will allow people to make decisions about its use. The ESTCP methodology, we start with um, part, forming a partnership with the stakeholders and do tests at DOD facilities. We try and involve early on the technology developers, the regulators, and the end users, and everyone who has a stake in the technology. The demonstration validates the operational cost and performance. It's an independent test and evaluation that we try to satisfy the needs of the user and regulatory communities. And then finally, we try to identify DOD market opportunities and um, activities that will uh, encourage technology transfer. Individual project requirements start with a formal demonstration plan that is submitted for review and approval by ESTCP, and in here we're looking for detailed performance objectives and details about how the demonstration will be conducted in order to collect the data that's needed to evaluate those performance objectives. Then um, the technology demonstration takes place to collect all of the data that is outlined in the demonstration plan. We look for written cost and performance reports, and almost more importantly, we look for support for technology transition. And we're looking for things beyond just publishing articles, although that is very important. It's not sufficient in general for technology transfer to the end user communities. So we're also looking for ideas about guidance documents, training, best practices, those sorts of things that will help implement the technology. The next few slides talk to the solicitation process. We put out three calls simultaneously, one to the Department of Defense, a broad agency announcement to which private organizations and universities can respond, and a call to federal organizations outside the DOD. All three solicitations follow a very similar process. We begin with a brief pre-proposal that will be due in March. Then, uh, based on those pre-proposals, ESTCP will inform everyone as to whether or not we wish to request a full proposal. The full proposals um, are accompanied by an oral briefing that generally takes place in the September timeframe. And based on the full proposal and the oral briefing, we will make selections as to the technology demonstrations that we will fund. Briefly, the DOD call for proposals. Here we have a fairly broad topic um, call for demonstration projects that address DOD environmental requirements. A DOD lead is required on these proposals. We look for a short, and writ short written pre-proposal. Then we request full proposals. We may recommend some modifications based upon the pre-proposal. And then we do the selections based on the full proposal and the oral, oral presentation. The broad ag agency announcement and call for proposals outside the DOD start with a somewhat narrower call for technologies, and the specific topic areas are a bit narrower, and Andrea will walk through that in a few minutes. And similarly, we ask for a short written pre-proposal from which we will request full proposals. Um, organizations outside the DOD responding to both the BAA and the call for federal organizations will be um, assigned a DOD liaison uh, who can assist with site selection and technology transition, both in terms of identifying barriers and opportunities. And then the selection process is quite similar with a full proposal and the oral presentation. And now I will turn it over to Andrea, um, and she can walk through the um, solicitation topics. Thanks, Anne. 
Uh, this year, we've released two topic areas under our broad agency announcement and under the, federal, the announcement for the federal organizations other than DOD. Under environmental restoration, we've released a topic on management of contaminated groundwater. The main objective for this topic is to seek proposals that develop tools and technologies that help reduce the cost of DOD's long-term liability associated with contaminated groundwater. We're particularly interested in the most difficult to treat sites where management is most likely to be needed for many years. Assessment of how best to combine technologies to address these sites is also of interest, as are tools to help with making this decision to transition from active to passive remediation technologies. Finally, optimization, assessment, and long-term monitoring tools are of interest. Proposals are limited to those addressing the contaminants of chlorinated solvents, energetic compounds, and emerging contaminants of interest to the DOD. Under the Munitions Response Program, we've released a topic area on detection, classification, and remediation of military munitions in the underwater environment. Technologies that will facilitate management of underwater munitions sites are also of interest. Technologies can be applicable to ponds, lakes, rivers, estuaries, and coastal or open ocean areas. The munitions of interest range from small projectiles and mortars to large bombs, but proposals do not need to address the entire range of potential munitions. Please also note that proposed technology should have completed required proof of concept work that shows evidence of the technology's capabilities. For our DOD call for proposals, we've, re we've released topics in four of our program areas, environmental restoration, munitions response, resource conservation, as well as weapon system and platforms. Under environmental restoration, we're seeking proposals in three main areas, monitoring, reduction in the cost to complete, and wastewater treatment. Monitoring technologies can address chemical or biogeochemical parameters of interest in soil, sediments, or water. Technologies addressing reduction in the cost to complete are sought for contaminated groundwater or for contaminated aquatic sediments. Wastewater treatment technologies are sought that are energy efficient and low maintenance. Under the Munitions Response Program, as with the BAA, we're specifically seeking technologies that address munitions response in the underwater environment through either wide area and detailed surveys or cost-effective recovery and disposal. Recovery and disposal, disposal should focus on recovery in the shallow water environment and should address the explosive safety issues. Under the Resource Conservation Program area, we're seeking proposals under the sustainable management of natural resources as well as under air quality, specifically um, issues associated with management of fugitive dust and fire emissions. Under sustainable management of natural resources, three areas are of particular interest. These are ecological systems, living marine resources ecology and management, and species ecology and management. Finally, under weapons systems and platforms, we're seeking proposals in four areas, manufacturing and, and maintenance, green energetics, waste reduction, and lead-free electronics. On this slide, we have the dates relevant to the solicitation process. Um, our solicitation was released on January 8th. The short pre-proposals are due March 12th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. This is a hard deadline. Um, I really recommend you not wait until 1.55 to submit, as um, the system can get loaded down. Please get those in early. We will request full proposals in the June 2015 timeframe with full proposals due in August 2015. All, proposals, all full proposals that are requested do require an oral presentation before the ESTCP Technical Committee in September of 2015 with projects selected in October the following month. Um, anticipated awards we believe will occur in about March of 2016. The selection criteria for our proposals are, are um, quite clear and standard and are presented here in roughly the order of importance. The very first one, most importantly, is relevance. It's very important that your proposal directly address one of the topic areas that we've just um, gone through. And it's also, that is a pass-fail criterion. And likewise, 
it's very important that your technology is appropriate and ready for demonstration. And again, this is a pass-fail criterion. Next, we mostly look um, heavily at the technical merit of the proposal, followed by the cost-benefit, transition proposal, total cost to implement the project, and small business participation. Um, that's specifically just for the BAA full proposals. Hallmarks of a competitive proposal. Um, as I mentioned on the slide pre previously, it's very important that what is proposed clearly addresses the topic areas that have been laid out in the solicitation. It's also very important that the proposals have well-defined demonstration questions. And for those of you not familiar with our program, I do recommend that you go onto our website and look at our guidance for demonstration plans, because in that guidance we also lay out what we're looking for in terms of performance objectives and metrics for a demonstration. And that can be helpful to look at when you're preparing your proposal. It's also important that the demonstration will provide a significant benefit in terms of reducing costs as well as improving performance for a particular issue that we have at DOD sites. And finally, it's important that what's proposed is technically sound and that we're able to evaluate that from the proposal and that you have a detailed technology description, very well-defined performance objectives, as well as a detailed and thorough technical approach. Additional information about our program can be found at our website here. And at this point, I will turn it over to Deanne Ryder for our question and answer period. Great. Thank you, Andrea. We will answer as many questions as time permits, focusing on those that are generally applicable to all submitters in nature. Please note that we will not be able to answer questions about specific proposal ideas or technologies during this webinar. If you have a technical question, please contact the program manager listed on the appropriate topic area. With respect to groundwater topic area, what is meant by the energetic compounds? Energetic compounds are those that contain explosives and propellants um, that, are, uh, that result from the uh, use of munitions on our site, so things like TNT, RDX, and so forth. Is waste reduction and forward operating bases included in the solicitation? This topic was included under the DOD call for proposals under the Weapon System and Platforms program area, so you can look for a little more detail on that topic under that solicitation. Is there a way for university investigators to submit a proposal to the wastewater treatment call? Um, since that is a topic that is available only to DOD, the mechanism to do that would be for the university to find a DOD partner and submit the proposal uh, via the DOD call. The DOD topic areas, specifically the air quality topic on fugitive dust, can a non-DOD entity uh, partner with a DOD group to submit a proposal? Um, Non-DOD entities can certainly partner with the DOD group in that case. However, the DOD entity needs to be the lead to be able to submit through the DOD um, solicitation. What if the proposal covers two topic areas? Um, each proposal needs to be addressed, uh, to be uh, submitted in response to only one topic area. So if you have a technology that is uh, applicable to more than one of the topic areas, then um, I would suggest that you uh, separate it into proposals that respond to each of the two topic areas and explain how that technology is relevant to each of them. What are the typical funding levels? While we don't specify um, what funding levels we expect, I can say that the, what you should propose should be what you think you need to address your technical objectives. Having said that, projects can range anywhere from 100 to 3 or 400 K per year, and there, there's even some outliers there, so that there's a pretty broad range of, of what's addressed. And then most projects tend to run two to four years. There was a question regarding the installation energy solicitation that will be released in February. Could you provide additional information on that? Um, the, you can look to our website. The plan is to release that solicitation in early February, and it will be specific to the installation energy technologies. 
does the technology to be demonstrated in an ESDCP project have to be developed in a DOD lab if a DOD researcher acts as the lead PI? No, we have no requirement regarding that. What is the definition of a DOD group? Uh, so this can be any organization that falls within the Department of Defense. Uh, it can be a DOD lab. It can be from an installation. It could be from a Corps of Engineers district. Uh, anything that is within the, the, the structure of the DOD. For the DOD proposal calls, can we have a list of all DOD organizations that are recognized for this proposal? Uh, we really don't have a list of DOD organizations that are recognized. Um, if you are a DOD entity, most likely then we can um, accept your proposal. If you have any question about that, uh, you can certainly contact the program office in advance and, and we can talk to you more specifically about your issues. Could you provide clarification on how ESCCP dollars are distributed to a team consisting of a federal academic and others outside of the United States? Uh, so that depends on how the proposal comes in to ESTCP. If it comes in as a DOD proposal uh, with a DOD lead and has an academic partner, then we expect that that DOD lead will handle the contracting to any entities inside or outside the United States. If a proposal comes in with, um, in response to the BAA with a private sector lead and a DOD partner, then we will directly contract through the Corps of Engineers contracting office that we use with the uh, private sector organization, and we will directly provide funds to uh, any government partners. What is meant by decentralized treatment of fixed installations? Is there a specific desired treatment capacity? Um, regarding the decentralized treatment, um, many of our DOD installations actually are um, deal with the local municipalities. Um, so decentralized means creating freestanding or, or standalone uh, wastewater treatment on the installations. Um, I believe the second part of that question was the, uh, thank you, was the desired treatment capacity. Um, we don't have a, a fixed treatment capacity that we have specified there. Um, we certainly need it to be of a size where you can get reasonable cost and performance um, data from the system. Having said that, uh, you know, often roughly maybe 500 GPM, I would say, would be a good demonstration size under ESTCP. Uh, for the February solicitation, is that one where you might find microgrid and energy control types requirements? Uh, yes, things like that. We have not um, yet specified the exact topic areas that we'll be soliciting, but it will be uh, things in regard to um, installation energy requirements. In the past, this has been distributed generation, microgrids, control technologies, uh, energy efficiency technologies. And at the time that the solicitation is released, the exact topic areas that we'll be soliciting um, will be included in that solicitation. Great, thank you. This is the last general question that we've received. Uh, there are other questions that are more specific to the topic area or technology. As we mentioned before, we ask that you contact the program manager for that specific area. Thank you for attending today's webinar. As a reminder, the presentation and audio will be archived for future reference on the certified and ESTCP solicitation webpage. This concludes today's webcast.